Hi guys! Before I start, I want to preface this video with some quick disclaimers. For one thing, I'm not following my usual MO. Usually I discuss art in relation to storytelling, but this time I'm going to be talking about myself and my inspirations. So still an art video, but not like a pretentious analysis or an opinion piece. Secondly, I'd like to thank the art and lifestyle YouTuber Kales Brown for agreeing to collaborate with me. She's a very kind, honest, open person, and you should definitely check out her channel and follow her on Instagram if you're so inclined. I will be leaving links in the description so you can do that. You might know Kales thanks to the recent drama in the art community featuring a quote-unquote creator by the name of Shannon, but Kales isn't a drama or tea channel and has a very diverse amount of art blogs to offer from story times, painting process, music, and good advice for artists. Thirdly, and just so this is clear, the idea we agreed upon for our collab was for us to each talk about our art inspirations while drawing a piece of each other's works in our own style. So I'm not about to claim that this picture I am drawing in this video is my own original idea. It's a draw this in your style challenge, and so keep that in mind. Here's a pic of the original by Kales, just so you have an idea. She actually has two different versions of this drawing, but the older one spoke to me more. The newer one is clearly a self-portrait, while the older one is left more ambiguous, which is something I use in my own work, since I tend to obscure faces, and I felt it was a good fit for me. Kales made a lovely video talking about her inspirations while drawing something of mine, so if you've seen my video, you have to watch her video too. It's the law. I don't make the rules on this, it's just... It's illegal to not watch her video, that I will link to at the end of this one, so if you don't watch it, you're a criminal. So there. Alrighty, who wants to hear about my art inspiration? Nobody? Too bad, let's go. How I got inspired to seriously learn how to draw is actually pretty funny, so it's worth mentioning. When I was a lot younger, I had a childhood best friend. Someone I was closest to and hung out with for days on end for summer sleepovers. The one person who I was completely on the same wavelength with. My friend is an extremely talented person and could basically do anything. They were an athlete and an amazing singer and could play in any instrument they wanted to and wrote their own music. At the time, this only mildly bugged me, who had really no talent set that made me stand out, but we always had a good time together, so it wasn't a big deal. We usually hang out, eat junk food, run around outside like heathens, watch movies, or chill and do something creative like draw. We both got into the same book series. Some of you may know it, it's called Redwall. A series about woodland animals who live in a stone building and fight off evil with medieval weaponry. A lot of our outside play was basically us LARPing as furries, but we were like 11. One day I was over at their house and they were like, hey, so I drew our characters and pulled out a stack of paper and these drawings were good. Like, really good. And that's when the jealousy kind of hit. It was sort of like the last thing that I thought we were kind of equally good at had collapsed and now I was just beneath them somehow. And so I decided from that moment that I was going to get to their level no matter what. I am not a competitive person normally, but for whatever reason I had an itch to catch up and excel at something as well, or not better than they could. And so I seriously began to work on drawing. Because Redwall was where we'd started, I used the Redwall TV show and book illustrations as well as the Watership Down TV series as a reference. Then. When I realized my friend also drew humans very well, I began to use reference from <coughs> anime and <coughs> manga and Christopher Hart how to draw anime books. Please don't pity me. I don't deserve it. I've long since moved past this point, so like way past this point. I still revisit my Redwall roots from time to time. Drawing animals is more fun than drawing people because it can be stylized and so proportions and consistency aren't as big a priority. I now don't have to use references that much, and if I do, I know how to properly utilize them so that I'm not just completely copying a photo. But now, a lot of my current inspirations are cinematic, such as film or TV shows. And that isn't surprising to anyone who knows me personally. I am very passionate about using art for the purpose of storytelling, which is why I hate most soulless corporate movie franchises. Not because I don't understand the hustle, but simply because they're never brave enough to try to be different or creative, visually or narratively. I can appreciate a bad or even boring movie if at least they made an attempt to try something new, but these don't come up often because there's a big stigma around failure and how it's bad. And from a financials perspective, that makes sense. 
But from an artistic viewpoint, failure is a good thing. It creates an opportunity to grow and build from the experience. Jim Henson is one of my biggest inspirations, visually and tonally. A lot of my current drawings, though based on a desire to express my emotions and mental state, take a lot of ideas from his style of character design. I like the weirdness of it. And I like the way Jim Henson and his team always make it seem so fun. A lot of the Muppet Show is just them combining, at the time, well-known and popular music with wacky, insane visuals, and there's nothing pretentious about it. Just creators loving their craft and having a great time. But Jim Henson wasn't wildly successful. Films like The Dark Crystal and Labyrinth didn't succeed with his current audience because they'd grown accustomed to his softer, more child-friendly side with the Muppets and Sesame Street and weren't expecting dark fantasy narratives. These films were only successful after he passed away, where they were then fully appreciated by a new, younger audience who looked past the material he started with and enjoyed it for a standing apart. In fact, on a similar train, I recently discovered and became extremely obsessed with the work of Jan Svankmacher, enough that I can even spell his name without looking it up. And the man was put in prison for the work he made. This guy knew his work was weird, disturbing, and would alienate an audience, but what did he care? He was making the art he wanted to make, and if that doesn't inspire you, I don't know what will. Of course, just because I'm obsessed with weird, creepy films that may or may not involve puppets and stop motion doesn't mean I don't find inspiration from 2D artists. When it comes to textbook classically known artists, Rene Magritte, Kiki Smith, Dorothea Tanning, and Egon Schiel are my go-to master studies. I'm mainly drawn to the Expressionist and Surrealist movement, which you could probably have already guessed from my interest in Jan Svankmeyer and Jim Henson, though you could argue that Jim Henson tends to lead more towards absurdist. Going off on a tangent, I actually thought Monty Python was absurdist comedy, but I looked it up and it turns out they were making surrealist comedy, which probably explains why each episode feels like one massive fever dream. Anyway, I'm also inspired by the artists around me. On a wider known scale, the comic strip Bloom County, created by Berkeley Breathed, was a staple of my life, owing to the fact that my mom owned several books and a Ba Hairball coffee mug. His hilariously on the nose and profound commentary on society and politics, as well as his dedication to creating strong personality in his characters, is something that spoke to me and countless other fans. According to his recently published compilation, he was in a long rut and only recently returned to making Bloom County with a renewed spark of joy in his work. I think that it's important for people to realize that their favorite creators are, in fact, human beings who become burnt out and exhausted. It's easy to be hard on yourself and think that you're the only one who gets stuck while everyone else is able to keep going, even though that is completely untrue. It's inspiring to me to know that falling into a pit of stagnation is completely normal. And because I am a normal shut-in who constantly browses the internet, there are several artists on Instagram and DeviantArt that I follow whose styles I adore and collect obsessively so that I can stare deeply at and hopefully absorb their talent from. Emulation is part of becoming an artist, hence why art schools will always have you do a master's study. Applying methods from other artists into your own work is a completely normal means to grow your style and eventually you gather up enough techniques together until they create something completely your own. Learning from peers is probably my biggest source of inspiration. I don't think anyone is ever completely self-taught. References and studies have always been an important tool for artists, and there's no shame in utilizing them. So I think that covers everything. Inspiration is the sort of thing that evolves over time, so probably in a few years this list will change, and honestly, I'm kind of excited for that, because it means I get to get, discover some new cool things I haven't heard of before. So. Once again, before I close, I ask that you please watch Kales Brown's video. If you don't, you will immediately be thrown into YouTube jail, and we definitely don't want that to happen, so why risk it? I'm only saying this for your sake. Well, no, Kales too. I mean, she did put in the effort to make a whole video that I have linked on your right over here, so the only work you have to do is take your cursor over and go... I'm such a generous person, you don't even have to hunt for the link in the description, or put Kales Brown in your search bar. It's right there. I did all the hard work for you. But all goofing aside, thank you for watching this video. And for any returning viewers and my subscribers, thank you for your support. I really do appreciate your time, and I hope to see you again soon. Stay safe out there, y'all.